Everyone is clamoring for the new ChatGPT code interpreter plugin, and rightfully so, because it promises to be amazing. But there is one teeny tiny little problem. Most of us plebs don't have it and are stuck on the wait list. And that sucks. But there is hope. There is a plugin that is available right now that does almost everything I have seen Code Interpreter do. And some things, arguably, it does even better. Hey there, it is I versus AI. And there is a lot of hubbub going on about Code Interpreter. In fact, in this video, Philip at AI Explained shows off many of the things that the highly anticipated plugin by OpenAI can do. Make QR codes, 3D data visualization, wow! But here's a little secret. The notable plugin can do all of that and more. Like right now, let me show you that you do not have to be a data analyst. Notable can be used in lots of creative ways. I'm going to show you 10 prompts that you can use with Notable right now and one bonus prompt that can't be done with Code Interpreter. Over here under GPT-4, you're going to scroll down to Plugins. If you don't have any plugins enabled, you will see that. Just click here and scroll all the way down to the bottom to the Plugins store. You can now search for plugins, thank God, because scrolling through 38 pages of plugins was doing my head in, and I just put in notebook here to get to Notable. And you'll want to click this little button to install. Now, when you install it, you will be met with a request to set up two-factor authentication for your ChatGPT account, which, from a security standpoint, you should really do anyway. Once you have two-factor authentication set up for your ChatGPT account, you'll need to log in to Notable. I highly recommend using your Google account here. And in fact, the team at Notable recommends this. Notable is very simple. There are spaces. Inside those spaces, there are projects. And inside those projects, there are notebooks. These notebooks are what ChatGPT creates when you ask it to do a task. And this notebook right here is the one in which I'm going to be running all of the prompts that I'm going to be showing you today. This notebook is actually set to view anyone. So you'll be able to go into the notebook, click on anything in these items here, and more things will be in here by the time I am done. But this is the example of a notebook. This is basically what is happening when ChatGPT is talking to Notable. It's really fun to open up a notebook and watch ChatGPT fill it out. It'll start out empty, and then it will actually fill out and run the code right before your eyes. So watching what ChatGPT does here in the notebook is really fascinating. But one of the things that is getting people so excited about Code Interpreter is the ability to upload your own documents. And as you can see here on the side, you can do that. In fact, down here under Add and Create, you can add files. You can import up to 25 files at one time with a file size limit of 100 megabytes per file. Now that you have installed the Notable plugin, you simply need to enable it from the plugin list. This is just an overview of the Notable plugin with the available functions and parameters. And the important thing I want you to note is this Get Data Sources. This is how you can upload documents directly from the ChatGPT window as long as the link is to a document type that Notable can read, like an image or a .csv or a Google Sheets, then Notable can read the information in that data source that you're linking it to and then install that data source right directly into your plugin. The first step is to get or set your default project. This is important. If you don't do this, you will waste one of your precious 25 for every three hour prompts, and I don't want you to do that. So the first thing that you do before you ask it to do anything is to simply ask it to set your default project like this. Set default project to and whatever the link is. Now let's move on to the first thing that Notable can do that Code Interpreter can do as well. And that is 
QR code. Did you know, for example, it can generate QR codes? I said, create a QR code that I can scan with my phone to reach the following URL. And lo and behold, it creates it. And yes, it does work. Maybe I'm easily impressed, but I think that's pretty amazing. The prompt for the QR code is create a new notebook called QR Code YouTube. Install the necessary QR code libraries and create a 500 by 500 pixel QR code on a white background. With the data matrix, the part that's usually set to black, set to a different color and linking to YouTube. And I ask it to do that again in a new notebook and link it to Twitter for I versus AI and YouTube channel for I versus AI. And here's a code. And now it's going to create the QR code for Twitter. And you can see it beginning to run the code and producing the output, which will then show up right here in the chat. GPT window. Next up, 3D data visualization. And look, just for fun, I'm going to go into the data. Look at this. I'm traveling into the data. This is so wild. I don't know how helpful it is, but I think that's just beautiful and crazy. I'm asking ChatGPT to analyze the following Game of Thrones data set, which predicts which character will die. I'm asking it to give me some insights about the complicated political landscape, and I am requesting it to ensure that it suggests diagrams that the Plotly Python library can create. And then I'm telling it where the data set is. It will tell you about the data set and then suggest some 3D diagrams that can be done. It will try and enter in some values. It's correcting its mistakes as it goes along and gives you some ideas for other types of 3D diagrams that you can use. That leads us to the second step of this 3D diagram prompt. I am now asking it to take the same data set and asking it to create a 3D scatter plot of age, popularity, and number of dead relations on three axes to see if there's a relationship between those variables. Once you get a 3D scatter plot, ChatGPT will not be able to show that in its window. So head on over here to the cell menu, click on embed output, copy that to clipboard. I just threw it here into this HTML viewer and clicked on run. Here you can see that it has given us indeed a 3D scatter plot. Yep, dead relations six and dead relations zero based on age and popularity. So this is a character here and another character here, outliers, but that is just beautiful and is done with Notable. Next, did you know that Code Interpreter can do optical character recognition? I screenshotted this text from a New York Times article, I think it was, and I asked, OCR the text in this image and write a poem in Danish about it. Now, I don't want to exaggerate, it often gets OCR wrong. I don't want to get your hopes up, it fails more often than it succeeds. But when it works, it can do it. For this one, I grabbed this screenshot from Reddit with thanks to Redditor Jagonu. This is the system prompt for Code Interpreter. And this is really important because it shows you exactly the instructions that are being sent to Code Interpreter. The tool that Code Interpreter is using is simply Python, which is exactly what we are doing using Notable. Therefore, in theory, you should be able to do everything you can do in Code Interpreter in Notable. Here's the prompt for OCR. Create a new notebook called OCR Image and install easy OCR and other necessary libraries and modules and use it on this image. One thing to note here is that I had a lot of trouble with this one because ChatGPT kept wanting to use the Tesseract library, which cannot be used in the notebook environment that Notable have. But I did find that easy OCR does work, though it is a bit slow. It took a few steps, but we did get the text from our image. So OCR in Notable does work. Next up, data analytics. And if you weren't that impressed already, here's where it gets fairly game changing. You can get it to do the data analytics, not just the visualizations. For example, I said, find five unexpected, non-obvious insights from this data and offer plausible explanations for them. For the most interesting observation, provide a compelling and clear visualization. Create a notebook to find five unexpected, non-obvious insights from this data source about teen actors. After some considerable time, it begins to output 
some really nice unexpected insights. Age difference distribution, age difference by gender, age difference versus actor popularity, age difference by number of love interests. And then it concludes with a maximum age difference. ChatGPT has been doing pretty well so far, but this next task really caused it to fall on its face. And to be honest, it's hard to tell whose fault it was. How about basic video editing? Now, there is a limit to what it can do, but it can do some basic video editing if you ask it. For example, I uploaded a short file and asked it to rotate the file 180 degrees and it was able to do video it. Video editing. It is possible to do simple video editing with Python, but this one really gave me some problems. I first asked it to trim one minute from the beginning of a video to rotate that video 180 degrees and change its tone to grayscale. This was a lot harder and I wasted a lot of prompts. Eventually, I realized that the task might need to be taken into smaller bites, so I simply asked it to trim one minute from the beginning of a small three minute clip. To complete this task, it does install MoviePie. And I have found that whenever there is a lot to install, ChatGPT can often get hung up or time out. But then it again tries to create a file or find the file in a path that does not exist. And it just made this path up despite me telling it that it is located in the default project. So I tell it it's in the default project and that there is no temp folder and it gets back to work. Now, I've only seen code interpreter videos where the prompt has already been run and the output has been made. And I don't see all of the back and forth that may have happened behind the scenes. So I want to be really honest with you and show you that there is a lot of back and forth when working with ChatGPT and Notable. Even if you are extremely clear in your prompt, it will frequently just make up a folder and then tell you there's nothing in it because that folder doesn't even exist. It's pretty frustrating. And it now tells me that the video has been successfully trimmed and is named Trim Video MP4. But when I look over here in the project folder, there is no trimmed video, despite saying that the command is successful. And this happened over and over again. So this is one where I'm going to have to give it to Code Interpreter because for some reason, this was simply not working, at least with my limited Python skills in the notable environment. Just to be cheeky, I also asked, can you make it black and white? Oh, and I also asked to add music, but it couldn't add music. In AI Explains video, he said that Code Interpreter could not add a music track to a video. And having had the beating that I've just gone through, I didn't feel brave enough to try and get uh, ChatGPT to add audio or a music track to a video that it can't even render or doesn't even show up in the notebook as I just showed you. But according to this website, the pythoncode.com, it can be done. So if you're feeling brave, go ahead and try it. Next, did you know that GPT-4 with Code Interpreter can do text to speech? As you can see, I asked, turn this entire prompt starting from the beginning into a text to speech file. Now, quite a few times it denied it had the ability to do this but eventually I got it to work. This one I had a lot of problems with, including it not doing the complete text, for example. It would stop at random places and stop like here, for example, and only do this part. Sometimes the same problem that I had with the video where it would tell me that the TTS mp3 file existed um, and that it had been created and then it wasn't in the notebook. But this time around, we've been lucky. The text has been successfully converted to speech and saved as TTS mp3. And here it is. And we can just give it a listen. You'll just click download and it'll open up and immediately start playing in this tab. You are chat GPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI Knowledge Cutoff 2021 to 09 current date. The 30th of May 2023 math rendering. Chat GPT should render math expressions using latex within. For As you can see, it does work and it sounds okay, but there is a possibly better option and certainly easier. It's just one click. 
I have featured the speech key plugin before on this channel, and it's very handy. You just simply ask it to convert the following to speech. And I asked it to use a male British voice. You do need to create an account, but once you do so, you'll simply be able to click on it. And let's take a listen. You are ChatGPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI Knowledge Cutoff, 2021 to 2009 current date, the 30th of May 2023 math rendering. ChatGPT should render math expressions using latex. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that is absolutely not a British voice at all. It is male, so it did get that right. SpeechKey does have a parameter where you can get a list of available artificial voices and it's quite a long list, but in my testing, it seems to pay absolutely no attention to any kind of instruction. Maybe I could try using a unique identifier to get the voice, but just telling it to use a male British voice seems to make no difference. Or female, you just get whatever voice you get. However, this method is much faster than working with Notable and I didn't even try to get uh, Notable to give me different voices for the text-to-speech. I was just grateful when I got the complete text converted. I created this image in Midjourney version 5, and then here's what I asked. I said, use OpenCV to select the foreground of this image, and look what it did. It picked out the foreground. No blue sky. Now I know it's not perfect, but it's nevertheless impressive all within the window of ChatGPT. Image editing. Create a Python notebook and install REMBG for remove background. In order to remove the completely white background of sticker.jpg, which is this adorable little kitty here. And I chose this from Midjourney because it had such a simple background and having been so thoroughly defeated from video editing, and text-to-speech, I wanted to give uh, Python something very easy to complete, at least hopefully. The result I asked for is to have ChatGPT output it as a transparent PNG. Let's see how it did. Yay! It was able to complete the task. The task took long enough that it did time out, but that's one of the cool things is that if it times out in ChatGPT, that doesn't mean that it isn't completed. And you can just head on over to your project and see if it's here in the notebook. Now, Python is perhaps not the greatest with background removal. As you can see, there's some sections here around the whiskers, but I'd count that as a win. Though I'd be very curious to see if code interpreters Python can do a better job. For the moment though, before anyone gets too carried away, it does still hallucinate quite a lot. So I uploaded this image and I asked it questions about it and it answered and I was like, wow, it can do image recognition. It said, this image appears to be a digital painting of a humanoid figure at a desk with a rather complex background. I was initially amazed until I realized that it probably got that from the file name. Image recognition. This is one that does indeed work with Python in Notable but there may be an easier, faster way for this one as well too, at least until Code Interpreter comes along. This image recognition task took about five to seven minutes of going back and forth uh, with this. You can see that it ran quite a lot here and it told me all the libraries it needed. And the problem with this task and Notable is that image AI here is a library that's required that also has dependencies that have to be installed. And this is where ChatGPT was getting stuck. It goes on and tries some more. It has created the notebook. It has loaded the image. Now I have done this before in my testing before recording this video. And I'm not gonna run this again because I'll let you know that the outcome was not that interesting. Basically what you get is after installing all of this and then you get a module error down here at the bottom this is the important part it will give you image recognition based on probabilities it will predict what's in the image and it will give you five results 
but they are not full sentences or complete guesses. They are literally words. This is the image that I was inputting to use for this. And the number one word that I continued to get back in my testing was castle. That's really the only recognizable word that I got. Every once in a while, I would get an odd word that had nothing to do with the image at all. Again, is this a Python problem or a Notable problem or a ChatGPT problem? I don't know, but I do know another way to give you image recognition that works quite a bit better than this. This is the Scene Explain plugin, and it does a better job, but it's still not perfect. This is the explanation it gave us, which is, this is a watercolor painting of a picturesque Cotswold village scene, which is excellent. That's exactly what this image is. It is of the Cotswolds. It is watercolor. The idyllic country road winds through lush green fields with charming cottages and houses interspersed. That all sounds correct, but let's try one more. This is is an image I did of a wizard just sitting at a table reading a book by the light of his wand. A white bearded wizard sits at a wooden table in a dimly lit candle filled room engrossed in a thick book. That is all correct. A glowing purple flamed pot sits on the table. Correct. And here's where it goes completely off the rails. A young woman stands behind a bookshelf holding a potion bottle. The bookshelf contains various volumes, including Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. A painting of a candle hangs in the foreground and a shiny blue glass ball hangs from a chain. Twisted trees and a nebulous sky in the background suggest a world of magic and witchcraft. So basically from the second sentence on, it made that entire thing up more or less. But it's time for the next example and what I wondered was what is the biggest document I could upload to get it to analyze. The longest book that I've ever read is Anna Karenina. I think it's about a thousand pages long and I pasted it into a Word doc and it's about 340,000 words. I uploaded it and then I asked as you can see find all mentions of England, analyze them to discover the tone in which the country is perceived in the book. I decided to use the same text Anna Karenina as Philip used in his AI Explained video. But I planted two sentences of a well-known tongue twister. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? As much wood as a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. And I placed them at different places in the text, which is indeed massive at 39,831 lines here and notable. I asked ChatGPT to discover the two tongue twister sentences about wood that I have inserted into two different places in the text that are incongruous and do not belong. And once those two sentences are found, print out the sentence that appears directly before them in the text so that I know you have actually scanned the text. I had to tell it again that there's no temp directory, that the file is in the default folder because it kept insisting on putting the file in a directory that did not exist. But it did finally complete the task. It gave me this output here and both of them are incorrect. But in the text scanning notebook, it does find the sentence. And this is indeed the sentence that was before. But the I believe you, I believe you, what were you saying? And, but if only you knew how wretched I am, was correct. And the second sentence was, as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. And here it was. And this is the correct sentence. I feel like the reason why ChatGPT could not find these sentences is because of a problem that occurs with all plugins. And that is the length of context returned. This is a lot of context. And I've noticed that it causes ChatGPT to be unable to complete the task, whether that be a transcript for a long YouTube video or something very long like Anna Karenina. But it could indeed complete the task. 
At least in Notable, it could. So the next one's going to be kind of fun. I was surprised by the number of comments asking me to get it to do ASCII art. Now, you may remember from the last video that I got it to analyze this image. And yes, I asked it to turn it into ASCII art. And here is what it came up with. Not bad, not amazing, but not bad. This one, I had a lot of trouble, but it's actually good that I did. I did get an ASCII image. But as you can see, I kept getting problems where it was trying over and over again to send the same exact code. And it would return an index error, string index out of range. But this leads to one important difference between Notable and Code Interpreter. And that is that Notable's code can be fixed. Here is the code and this area right here, this code block was what was causing the error. I didn't know that, but I went over and asked GPT-3 actually, and it told me what was wrong with the code, gave me the fix for the code that GPT-4 was repeatedly doing incorrectly. I simply took the code and then scrolled down and ran the cell. The art appeared. I'll show it to you here because it's a little bit more colorful in the chat GPT interface. This is the original art that I asked to be changed into ASCII art. And here is the ASCII art. But before I scroll down and show you that, the way I got it to give me that art is I asked it to return the result of the cell that I had just run with the fixed code. And then scrolling down, I get the ASCII art. It's pretty close. But then for some reason, it gave me ASCII art again, and then again, and then again, and then <laughs> I don't know what that is about. So is Notable better than Code Interpreter? Well, here are some of the benefits. ChatGPT loses chats, and Notable can be seen as a backup or, more importantly, and this is something really neat. You can actually download your notebook and install them right in Visual Studio Code. And that's something that I don't think you can do with Code Interpreter. I also noticed that Code Interpreter does everything behind an opaque curtain. But with Notable, you can see what is happening live in your notebook. And that's just amazing. Not only that, you can run one cell at a time. You can also cut and paste just one cell or even one part of a cell into ChatGPT 3.5 like I did and ask for information about why it may not be working. That's a real benefit. Notable also has this neat feature of showing different ways that you can visualize your data. When you install a CSV file, in this case, the character predictions from Game of Thrones that I showcased earlier, it will show you the table here that you can work with. But the neat thing is this button right here, which will open this data prism suggestions. From there, you can see 15 suggested visualizations based upon 23 metrics and 22 dimensions for this particular data set. For example, a scatter plot a combined bar chart, a tree map, a sand key network, a violin plot, a token cloud, graduated symbol plot, dumbbell plot, donut chart, dimensional matrix, and there are a lot more. So if you're not sure what to do with your data and you don't even know what to ask ChatGPT to show you, you can get some ideas right here and simply ask ChatGPT to show you those particular charts right in the chat window. There are so many files that you can upload to Notable. MP3, MP4, DocX, PDF, CSV. There wasn't any file that I could find that couldn't be uploaded. We don't know if that's the same for Code Interpreter, but at least as far as Notable is concerned, there's quite a range of files that you can upload. But the thing that is most valuable about Notable is mentioned in ChatGPT's Code Interpreter system prompt. Internet access for this session is disabled. Do not make external web requests 
or API calls as they will fail. And that brings me to our 11th and bonus prompt. Create a Python notebook and use the requests library to fetch the front page of Reddit and then list the top five posts here. Here are the top five posts from the front page of Reddit. Post number one, celebrating the recent International Tabletop Day. Post number two, Doggo's first day. Post number three, ain't no way the buckets are poor. Post number four, a chunk of my red hair. And post number five, PGA Tour. There are even links to the posts. Here are all four of the posts. I don't see the third post here, ain't no way the buckets post. But most importantly, that means that using Notable, you're no longer in ChatGPT's walled non-internet garden. And because Notable is just a plugin, it can be chained together with other plugins like LinkReader or VoxScript, which allows you to do Google searches and YouTube transcripts, Pastebin, and even GitHub searches. So you can really power up your Notable session. Whereas my understanding is that Code Interpreter will be similar to Bing it will be a separate model, which does not have any ability to connect with the browsing plugin or with any other plugins in the plugin store. And that is just what I have learned about Notable so far. There's so much more to learn about plugins. And the most important thing to know about them is how to reveal their hidden functions that tell you what they can do and how to creatively prompt them to get the best out of the plugin experience. And that is why I've crafted a master plugin prompt that will do all of that for you. And I showcase it for you in this video on screen right now.